this headsmen seem not to be uh, taking it slow because uh, remember that uh, they were chased out of Igonga. And of course, that was done by Sunday at the AMO, popularly known as Sunday Goho. He asked all of them to leave Igonga community because they have been causing a lot of problems, kidnapping, raping, destroying the farmlands of the community people right there. And, uh, you know, even the Seriki was also sent away from Igonga. But guess what? Fulanis are back into the Igonga community and they have started killing people doing all sort of things that uh, one of the principal's hands was cut off by the headsmen. My major concern about this is what is the government saying about this headsmen? They have refused to declare headsmen terrorists and they have terrorized more than what we can even call a terrorist. I don't know what they are getting from those guys. I don't know what the uh, the engagements they've agreed on or whatever agreement they have that uh, they have decided not to declare these guys terrorists. They have so much terrorized the Southwest and I think this time around they are ready to die and do the worst. That is why they returned because I could remember how Sunday Igbo would disgracefully sent them out of a Ganga community. Anyway, guys, I'll bring you more details as uh, what happened right there in a Ganga community. More details, but please stay tuned, relax, and enjoy because we'll bring you the best, the most trending, exciting, reliable, and authentic happenings in the world of politics and many more in Nigeria. And of course, guys, we hope that you like our videos, share our videos, turn on your notification bell, and ensure that you are updated always because we are here to give you the most and the best exciting news you can get elsewhere. All right, guys, without further ado, it says right here that suspected Fulani headers have launched a fresh attack on a gongo in the Mbarakwa local government area of Oyo State. It was gathered that some headsmen on Friday afternoon attacked a retired school principal, Ojedokun Ogumodede. The reason, the reason why his assailant attacked him was not clear, but sources close to the victim told Punch that there was no confrontation between him and the headsman who inflicted matched injuries, which almost chopped off his two hands. The secretary of Ibarapa Farmers Union, Mr. Taiwo Adiabo, who is popularly known as Akowe Agbe, told our correspondents on the telephone that the retired principal is his relative. At the Agbo fighting for farmers' rights in Ibarapa said, headers had not stopped destroying farms and attacking farmers in the area, despite a public outcry against their criminal activities. He said the victim is my relative. He is a retired principal and he should be around 62 years old. I was called to see what happened to him. I immediately called the commissioner of police, Ngazi Onadeko. She said I should re report to the police officially, and I called the DPO in Ayete. He came with two officers and two vans loaded with armed police officers. The DPO, DPO could not look at the pictures of the victim. They were gory, strands of flesh, are preventing the two hands from falling off after the attack. The two hands are almost off. They have ruined his life. When contacted on telephone, police public relations officer in Oyo State, Mr. Olubenga Fadei, said he had not been briefed about the incident. He asked, he said the attack was a reprisal by Heather to an earlier attack against three Fulani by some youths in Iganga. He said information from DPO Ayete revealed that a Fulani headsman attacked and macheted a man in his farm by causing injury to his hands. The attack was a reprisal by some youths in Iganga. Three Fulani headsmen were attacked and they sustained injuries while they were rushed to a hospital in Igboara for treatment. The DPO Ayete and his police personnel were drafted to the scene to prevent further attacks that aggrieved youths were dispersed and normalcy restored. Well, I don't know how uh, all of this is going to end because Nigeria has become a war zone just because of one thing, just because the government has refused to label uh, uh, headers 
as terrorist group. Perhaps maybe because they are Fulanese, maybe that is why the president does not want to declare them as terrorist groups. Because I don't know how else uh, terrorism could be, because these guys are already terrorizing countries, they are already terrorizing states. They went back into the Ibarakwa, that is the Ngongo town, went back there to destroy crops and all of that, and the youths in that community attacked them. And just because they want to retaliate, they went back, the person they could see was the principal, a retired principal, and they chopped off his two hands. And in that very picture was left with only a strand of flesh holding those two hands together. That means that man's both hands are gone for life. He's no longer going to make use of his hands. I wonder how else uh, people can be uh, a, a declared terrorist group. This is more than uh, terrorism. Because the community have asked you not to return. It is their land. What have you gone there to do? You went back there to cause more problems because they feel that the government cannot do anything to them. They work freely. Nobody have been arrested. No Fulani have been arrested. It is only other uh, people that have been arrested. The Fulanis themselves have been causing issues. They are not being arrested. That is why I keep saying that the government only attend to issues from the surface. You attend to issues from the roots, not from the surface. It is only when people have retaliated, only when they have decided to revenge, to, to, to plan a revenge on the Fulanis, that is when governments will come out to say, we are one, we should live together in peace and unity and all of this, all of that, all of that. But you can obviously see what these Fulanis are doing. What did they go back to Igongo to do? What did they go back to Ibarakwa to do? They've been sent away from that community, so they should stay away. They should stay away, but rather they went back and the community youth chased them. But just because they wanted to retaliate, see what they did to this man. They chopped off his two hands. That means that man is not going to work again. He's likely not to do any domestic work with his hands any longer because both hands are gone. Pictures like that cannot be shown right here because, of course, they are gory pictures and, you know, would be prohibited to be posted here. But it is terrible for the government to continue to allow Fire headers to continue to ride on people just because other feel because others are not fighting back does not mean they don't have the audacity or they don't have the right to do what the Fulanis are doing. Let us all be patriotic if they are saying that we are one. We should all be patriotic, it shouldn't be on one side. Some people are trying to make peace, while others are trying to bring more trouble. It shouldn't be allowed. So, my dear people, what do you think about what is going on right here? Please drop it in the comment section. And also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you for staying tuned. Do have a pleasant time. Bye for now.